The federal jury today in Washington ordered Giuliani to pay a total of $148 million to two former Georgia election workers who were at the center of baseless claims he spread in the wake of the 2020 presidential election down there in Georgia, Fulton County, the Atlanta area specifically. So the jury of eight D.C. residents deliberated for roughly 10 hours across yesterday and today before reaching their decision. Jurors heard four days of emotional testimony in the civil trial against Giuliani. Uh, Giuliani, remember, was sued for defamation uh, by Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, her daughter, for falsely claiming they engage in a fake ballot processing scheme while they served as election workers for Fulton County in the last presidential election. So now remember, a federal judge in D.C. determined earlier this year that Giuliani was liable for defaming Freeman and Moss. What this trial had to determine uh, was the damages, the amount of money that Giuliani will now be forced to pay Freeman and Moss. Let's talk about this all even further with our friend, legal analyst, Seth Berenswag, who's been following this case very, very closely, and he joins us now. Um, Seth, good to see you yet again here. Um, uh, like I said, you've been following this uh, merely two days ago. Seth, Giuliani came out after the court proceedings were done for the day uh, and remained defiant uh, and insisted that Freeman and Moss changed ballots there in Fulton County. Uh, and he said the evidence would come out soon. Now we're getting this ruling today, this verdict from the jury on the damages question. Uh, should he not have said that two days ago? Well, it certainly didn't help his cause. This is an overwhelming victory for the plaintiffs. Mr. Giuliani absolutely got clobbered in this case. Nearly $150 million is the jury verdict spread out amongst punitive and compensatory damages, essentially equal between Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman. And it, it really just goes to emphasize uh, that you can't really think that a political theater masquerading as legal theory will work. In a situation like this, the jury has full authority and discretion to weigh the evidence in the case and to make a determination in all of these damages categories as to what it feels it is appropriate given the facts and circumstances. I would also note that although I can pretty much guarantee you that there will be an appeal filed by Mr. Giuliani's team in this case, this is a verdict that's virtually bulletproof. The jury has significant discretion to be able to render these kinds of verdicts. So this is really quite a day, and it's a monstrous verdict, a huge loss for Mr. Giuliani. Yeah, um, Seth, Giuliani reacting. Uh, he was in front of cameras. He also posted on X um, this a very terse statement here. He says the absurdity of the amount is indicative of the absurdity and unfairness of the entire proceeding. It bore no resemblance to a trial in a country with the rule of law. I wasn't able to offer any evidence in my defense. We'll have more to say and look forward to the appeal. So uh, kind of indicating, alluding to what you had just said, that the appeal process uh, will jumpstart off here very quickly. Um, but Seth, you know, I think it's important for the viewers to know what Ruby Freeman and her daughter, Shea Moss, went through. They were volunteers in Fulton County, Georgia, during the 2020 presidential election. Uh, and of course, President Joe Biden won Georgia. Uh, it was the first time a Democrat had won Georgia since the early 90s. Uh, they had to move out of their home because of all the threats, the online vitriol that they were getting. And, and so I just want to kind of import the seriousness to the viewer of what they went through. Of course, uh, we can say that because a judge already determined that defamation was at play here. Uh, when you talk about the damages, what's the difference between punitive and compensatory? Um, because there is a difference, right? Absolutely. Compensatory damages are designed to, for lack of a better phrase, make the plaintiff whole. Um, there was infliction of emotional distress and suffering. So compensatory damages are intended to compensate the victim to make her whole based upon the loss that she suffered at the hands of the defendant and his conduct in the case. However, punitive damages are, are there to be more uh, for purposes of punishment and also to signal the outrage to the jury's indignation and, and just how furious uh, and, and outrageous the facts in the case were. So one is to compensate for personal injury, including emotional 
emotional harm. The other punitive is really uh, for punishment and, and to send a message. And boy, did they really send a message. $75 million in punitive damages as to both plaintiffs. I would also just briefly go back to something that you pointed out that I a moment ago that I found out to be very interesting. As you were reading that tweet, and we, uh, as soon as we mentioned an appeal, there he goes waving the appeal flag. Sure. His complaint apparently was that he said, well, I never be, was able to come in and offer my defense in the case. With all due respect to Ms. Giuliani, it's just absolutely false. And in fact, just the other day this week, he was saying that he was going to take the stand. Right. A few minutes before in the morning that he was going to do that, it was announced that he actually made his own decision that he was not going to testify. That was his decision, not the judge. Yeah, you know, Seth, as well, when you talk about these damages uh, and the sticker shock, I think just for, you know, viewers, people who follow the story, people who follow the news, obviously Giuliani and his team probably have sticker shock as well. What is the reality or the likelihood that any of that money is going to get to Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss? You know, despite the appellate process now, is it going to be yeah. mired and mired uh, in delay, delay, delay? Will they ever see that money? Well, you know what? It's really a great question, and and I think that the answer is is a definite maybe. Um, it's unfortunately going to take years. The appeal is not going to delay the enforcement of the judgment unless the trial court judge rules otherwise, which would be unusual in this case. An appeal does not stay or hold off the execution of the judgment. So so they can go ahead and, and they can pursue this pretty much right away. However, as you've correctly pointed out, getting a verdict for a lot of money is one thing. Collecting it is entirely something else. And unfortunately, in a case like this, you have parties that move money, that hide money, that obviously uh, don't cooperate at all. And uh, notably, Mr. Giuliani already has been allegedly stiffing several of his own attorneys. So it's going to be a long process, but I think that one of the things that um, uh, these plaintiffs will be able to say is that although that's going to be a long road, there has to be some element of vindication here. Their names were smeared, which is really the essence of what a defamation case is. And when you have a message of something of such a monstrosity of a verdict, um, it really does uh, essentially have uh, you know, kind of an antiseptic effect in terms of clearing their names. So uh, the money is going to be a long road to haul. Um, but at least in terms of the verdict, it appears that the jury sent a very serious message in terms of what it felt was the a correct measure of justice. Yes, yeah, so just lastly, though, because I just thought of this, will um, the appellate process, the appellate effort by Giuliani and his team of attorneys be hindered um, by Giuliani's defiance, saying still he believes uh, these two women, mother and daughter, changed votes in Fulton County in, in 2020. He's still saying that. Is that going to factor into the appellate process? Not necessarily because the, the appellate record is closed in the case. Okay. Once the jury rendered its verdict, the, the, the record that is relevant that will be closed and then will be transported up for appeal has already been set. However, um, I, you can bet that there is a lack of cooperation and, uh, quite frankly, a, a lack of funds that Mr. Giuliani is going to be able to have for his appellate counsel. So I think if anything is going to have a negative impact, it's probably going to have the realities of the day from that standpoint. Yeah, uh, a long ways away from America's mayor. I think that's safe to say. Seth Berenswag, as always, thanks so much for being with us. Enjoy your weekend.